Hi everyone, it's Father Vince here. How are you? You okay? Um, I hope this finds you well. It feels like I haven't seen uh, many of you for, or well, haven't done this for a little while. So um, I hope you're okay and everyone's uh, enjoying the hot weather, uh, even if we're not quite uh, back to normal, I guess, at the moment. Um, so, uh, oh, hello, Dad. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, so what, what have I been up to? Um, well, this morning, of course, was my weigh-in day. Um, yeah, so um, I was on holiday. I was on holiday. Good, hi, Claire. Good evening. Hi, Hannah. You are right? How are you? Good to hear from you. Hi, Sharon. Nice to see you, Sharon. Um, hi, Pamela. Yeah, so I was, uh, I was on holiday in the Yorkshire Dales. And um, hello, Tracy. Hi, Ems. And I, I kind of overindulged a bit. Hello, Val. Um, the chocolates I have been doing um, thought for the night. You know, I do the Battle of the Chocolates. I'm afraid they they went during the holiday. I had my, I had all of them, to be honest. I shared them a bit. You know, I, I shared them, obviously. But, but I had more than that as well, you know. And you have a bit of wine and a bit of everything on your holiday. So I weighed myself this morning. And... I've put on a couple of pounds. <laughs> I was desperately trying to get myself down to at least where I left off. But, you know, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going, you know, think about next week. So uh, there we go. But anyway, never mind. Hello, Nora. Good to see you. Hello, Dave. Good to see you. Hi, Ronnie. Nice to see you as well. Uh, hi, hi, uh, Judith. Great to hear from you. Hmm. So anyway, yeah, so yeah, so everything's good with me. Um I bought a jumper though the other day, which I was a bit um I was a bit sad about really because um it kept uh, picking up static electricity. Um a bit weird. So I returned it to the shop and they've given me another one free of charge. <laughs> oh dear. I've been uh, I've been waiting to say a joke for a long time. <laughs> Anyway, I've got um, chocolates today. So last week, I did eat the Toblerone. I did eat the Toblerone, I have to be honest. I shared it at least. Well, uh, I'd certainly share it. But anyway, I've bought a new one just for thought for the night. How about that? Isn't that wonderful? And today, I hoped, I really hope I haven't done this one already. I've got a horrible sneaking feeling I have. I hope I haven't. Mint Aero, have we done that? If we've done it, I do have a backup, but um, if it's all okay, and I haven't done Mint Aero before, we've got Toblerone versus Mint Aero. What's it going to be? Now, I think I know what I'd go for, and it doesn't begin with a T. That's your clue. So, uh, there we go. So, Mint Aero or Toblerone. The rules are simple. Stick them down, and... Um, if Ronnie, if you wouldn't mind, Ronnie, if you wouldn't mind adding them up, please, that would be great. Thank you very much. That would be really great. Do you know what? On the holiday, I was in the holiday in the Yorkshire Dales, and I was thinking about... Um, I don't think so. Oh, go on, Ronnie, please, please, please do it, please. Please. I know I owe you a chocolate, but please, please. Um, anyway, I... I uh, yeah, Emily likes Mint Aero. Yeah, so on holiday, um, I was thinking, I, do you know, I had this weird idea. I thought, why don't I should do a song for some of the, the key guys at the church. And um, I was thinking about using TV themes. <laughs> so anyone recognise this TV theme? It goes like this. And this is about Father Taman, who of course is the vicar, okay? It's to a famous TV theme. Father Taman is the vicar of St. George's Freezy Water. Father Taman is the vicar. Father Taman is the vicar. <laughs> Don't ask me why I was doing that on holiday. I was just thinking of, would anyone know that theme tune? <laughs> what I was singing. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking of Father Taman so much, but I was thinking of that theme tune as well and it kind of came out. But I, I might have one for Dave as well, the church warden, and uh, maybe one for Ronnie as well. Lost the plot. I think I've lost the plot, Laura. 
Crystal Maze, no, not the Crystal Maze, not Holby. It's casual, Casualty, Casualty. I don't know why. I was thinking of the Casualty tune and I started putting some words to it. That's it, Casualty. Yeah, well done. Um, anyway, um, so I had a lovely holiday in... Um, <laughs> Fartainment. Oh dear. It's really bad, isn't it? Um, what about this tune? Um, uh, Dave Jenner is the church warden of Freezy Water St. George's. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Dave Jenner is the church warden of St. George's. Da, da, da. Who can guess that tune? <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. This is nuts. Anyway, I think it's because I've been on holiday. Neighbours, yeah. David. David Jen Church Warden to the Neighbours theme, yeah. Ronnie wants one. Um, Ronnie's the parish administrator. Okay. What can we do for Ronnie? Ronnie Batley, here we go again. Da, 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 da. Ronnie Batley. Parish administrator, da, 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 da. I don't know. I'm losing the plot. I'm losing the plot. I don't know why. Anyway, never mind. Anyway, I've done the chocolates. Um, I think that today I had um, a bit of a... We had somebody, didn't we? Um, during my holiday in um, the Yorkshire Dales, somebody came along with me. Um, who turned up in my suitcase, which I wasn't very happy with. And I don't know if anyone can guess who that was, but um, I unpacked my suitcase and um, there was someone in my suitcase, I'm not going to lie to you, a little somebody who makes me, I don't know, he's kind of a bit of a the bane of my life at the minute. He kind of follows me around everywhere. And I don't know who it is. And yeah, Jimmy Jam Jars. So I put, so Jimmy Jam Jars, he turned up on holiday. I didn't want him there, but he, he turned up in my suitcase, of course. So he annoyed me so much on the holidays. He was just trying to kind of, you know, just always going a bit over the top and, you know, kind of embarrass, kind of just embarrassing me a little bit around Yorkshire. So I left him on a dry, you know, one of those stone walls, a limestone those one of those dry walls they have up there. I left in one there with a bunch of sheep and I put a little note saying, this is Jimmy Jam Jars. Someone please take him because I'm fed up with him. That's what I did. I know it sounds bad, but I was so cross with him. I just couldn't, I just can't handle his antics anymore. He just drives me out the wall. Mm. So hopefully that's the end of Jimmy Jam, Jimmy Jam Jars. I don't want to see him again. Anyway, sorry, I think I just dropped something down here. One minute, one minute. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hold on a minute. What's, who was, I just heard something. What was that? What was that? Hold on a minute. What's, what's going on? I can't, I can't. Hello, everyone. How are you? Oh, don't listen to him. Jimmy Jam Jars, what are you doing back again? I thought I left you in Yorkshire. I managed to escape. I got back. I managed to escape. I was in um, Michelle's hair. What do you mean you're in Michelle's hair? I didn't notice that. Yeah, I was in Michelle's hair and they were noticed me. And here I am. Well, look, Jimmy Jam Jars, I'm just getting a bit fed up with your antics, okay? Getting a bit fed up with this. Pack it in, you, okay? Just pack it in, okay? I'm fed up with this. Look, the church is open again now. We, we, and we can't have you hanging around. But I want to do the sermons. You're not allowed to do the sermons, Jimmy Jam Jars. You know what happened last time? I got in trouble. I tried him. I tried him out on a. You had a little go at a sermon, didn't you, once on a, on a Saturday morning, and uh, there's no one in the church. But even with no one in the church, he got me in trouble with, uh, you know, the bishop and all sorts, didn't you, Jimmy Jam Jars? So naughty, yeah. Well, you've got to cut that out. Pack it in, all right. Father Vince ate all the burgers on holiday. Don't tell everyone that. I didn't eat. I didn't eat the burgers. All, all the burgers. All the 
burgers and the hot dogs. That's why you put on so much weight. Stop it, Jimmy Jam Jars. Pack it in. You see, he's always trying to embarrass me and get me in trouble. Aren't you? Right, listen, I thought, I, I thought you'd gone. I thought I'd left you in Yorkshire and now you're back again. You're really making me sad this evening. You're spoiling my thought for the night. Sorry, Father Vince. Well, that, that's better. At least you're willing to apologise. Now, just pack it in you, OK? I'm, I'm going to stick you over there and I don't want to hear any more from you, OK? Do you want to say goodbye to everyone? Bye, everyone. See you soon. Bye. All right. OK. Hold on. Hold on. What's say? What do you want to say? No, you can't bite Janice's nose. Pack it in. No, naughty. Right, you're, you're going back over there. That's enough of that talk. Let's stick you over there. Naughty Jimmy Jam Jars. All right? Naughty. Anyway, silly Jimmy Jam Jars. Anyway, right, well, so I had a lovely holiday in the Yorkshire Dales. Had some nice walks. Went to this place, the Forbidden Corner, which is like a great place for children to go to. It's like, um, there's all these little kind of secret pas passageway, you know, passageways, little uh, quirky gardens, little nooks and crannies children can explore. Really recommend it, the Forbidden Corner. So really good. Mm. Anyway, let's have a little uh, song and then we're going to have... A moment of uh, to talk about uh, a bit of reflection and then some prayers. Uh, yeah, so here we go. Let me get my guitar. So let's sing. This song is As the Deer Pants for the Water. As the deer pants for the water so much. Um, 
Yeah, so um, I just want to show you one more thing actually I got on holiday. And we walked through a bastard shop in a town called Hawes in North Yorkshire. And we, I walked past the shop and I saw this picture and Michelle bought it for me as an early birthday present. And it's like a waterfall. There's lots of lovely waterfalls that way in North Yorkshire. And I don't know if you can see it, there's a bit of a reflection, but it's um, made out of material. And I thought this is absolutely lovely. It's like kind of material and stuff. And Michelle said she, I could have it as an early birthday present. Isn't that nice? It's like a waterfall. You, you can't really see it properly like this, but it, it's really beautiful. It's very quite unusual. It's made out of material. Um, yeah, it's a really, really inspiring place. Um, what do you mean you can see Jimmy, Emily? You can't see... You can't see Jim. Oh no, he's not in a reflection, is he? Oh my goodness. Anyway, yeah, it's a lovely um, thing. And um, I bought the picture and had a little, well, Michelle bought it and had a little card saying the artist lives in the town and she's uh, uh, a committed Christian herself. So um, it was quite nice. I felt there was like a spirituality there and it was quite nice to find out that she is a, a faith herself, the artist. Mm. But then, so today, today is the Feast of the Transfiguration. And um, I'm just going to read you um, a bit of the, the passage from today's Gospel reading. It's a very famous story from the, from the Gospels. Um, but I'll just read a bit of it because it's uh, today's feast. And... Uh, it goes like this, so it's from the uh, Gospel according to Luke, although it's in the, uh, the other Synoptic Gospels as well. And uh, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory in the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. They were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent. And in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. And um, I was saying Mass earlier, and uh, I was just thinking about this. And what... Peter, James and John, they have this amazing uh, vision of Christ and he's revealed in all his glory, isn't he, on the top of the mountain. And I don't know whether you've had a, a kind of a spiritual experience in your lives. Um, I've probably had, I'd say, a handful in my life. I've had a couple of very... I had one when I was a child, definitely, which is connected to how I became a priest, I believe. But... Throughout my life, I've been lucky, you know, maybe a handful of times to have these very strong experiences, which reminds me about God's glory. Um, because it's good when you have an, a religious experience like that, because you, you, it's kind of God breaks through to you, because we all go around with these shells almost around us. And uh, we've got to... It's, God's always waiting to come in and sometimes we've got to allow him to break through so we can see him and hear him and listen to him. You might have experienced when you're reading and praying that God speaks to you. And sometimes it can happen, you know, on a walk or whatever as well. And I remember I went to visit my brother Luke in Canada a few years ago. And uh, I was with my mum and we went on a boat on the, on the, the river there in Niagara Falls. And I remember it was, uh, um, I think it was called the Maid of the Mist. Well, that was one of the boats. We might have been on the other one. Anyway, we went along this river 
and I remember it was quite packed the you know the the boat and it's a beautiful sunny day and everyone wanted to go to the front to see the the Niagara Falls and I remember I went right to the front I kind of managed to get my way and I had this kind of red mac on and I remember getting right to the front and the water was kind of go it was really beautiful and you could see like a rainbow through the uh, the mist from the waterfall it's beautiful waterfall and I closed and it, the water was crashing around my ears it's really loud quite deafening and I was getting wet and it was spraying in my face and I closed my eyes and I remember just saying thank you Lord because it was such a wonderful experience and I felt God really speaking to me powerfully at that time at the end of the boat in Canada Niagara Falls with this water crashing around me and and in my only response was to say thank you God to praise God to praise God for his the wonders and the glories of his creation and uh, who he is um, like Titanic <laughs> it wasn't quite like the Titanic I was probably I wasn't like yeah it's a little bit like the Titanic I guess Val yeah I was at the end I'm not sure if I had someone behind me kind of holding me but I was like that yeah and um, it was such a wonderful experience um, it was like a religious experience and somehow God got through to me he got through to me at the end of that boat and um, and I think the transfiguration reminds us uh, that God is uh, he's always wanting to break into our lives and something amazing like Jesus being on the top of that mountain um, being uh, you know bathed in this light and his clothes are all uh, white it's such a wonderful image of his glory and his kingship and his his uh, power and his kingdom and um, and sometimes we just have to ask God, God, I'd love to have an experience like that. And I pray that some of you, some of you might have had some one pretty powerful experiences yourself. And, uh, you know, if you haven't had a very powerful experience like that, kind of a spiritual experience, I pray that you might have one one day because uh, it really kind of grounds your faith, you know, because we all have doubts, don't we? But it kind of reminds you how powerful and how wonderful and how marvellous and how loving God is. Um, so I was thinking about that as I was reading the Transfiguration earlier um, and just now actually. Um, and of course today is also the, the 75th anniversary isn't it of the uh, bombing of Hiroshima. Uh, that, you know that terrible event when the, the, the bombs, uh, there's one on um, Nagasaki and then Hiroshima wasn't there and then the World War II um, came to an end but you know a huge cost to those cities and um, obviously uh, a reminder um, that we need God in our lives more than ever at the moment we need him to break into our lives so we don't kind of be shielded and um, kind of turned in on ourselves as St Augustine says we need God to come in and break in so atrocities like Hiroshima uh, should could not happen but um, sadly they do but we need to be hopeful and pray that God God's kingdom will come and his will be done and that we can all experience his love and his peace in our hearts um, let's just say a few prayers as we close this evening. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit 
and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O Lord, O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Alleluia. Heavenly Father, we'd just like to um, lift up everybody watching this this evening. We pray that everybody may have a very real experience of your love and your glory, as Peter, James and uh, John did on that holy mountain all those years ago, when they saw your son radiating his kingship and his divinity. We pray, Lord, that our hearts be open to your voice, that we may experience your love and the hope of your kingdom this evening. We pray, Lord, for those who are in particular need this evening, those who are ill, those who are concerned or worried about things, those who are um, We've got loved ones who are going through difficult times. Those who have trouble with their jobs at the moment or may be looking for work. We pray for all those people this evening. And we lift them to you. We pray, Lord, for those people, those poor people in Beirut at the moment. And we pray for the all the emergency services there as they try and get over the shock of this terrible, these terrible explosions recently. We pray also for other areas affected by natural disasters and man-made problems. We pray Lord for peace across the world and we pray for peace in every human heart. Father in heaven, whose son Jesus Christ was wonderfully transfigured before chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish at Jerusalem, give us strength so to hear his voice and bear our cross, that in the world to come we may see him as he is, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. I've really missed you guys. It's great to be back. Um, I didn't do my violin tonight, but I'll do that next week. Although that might be a good thing. <laughs> um, oh, who won the chocolate challenge? So it was Aero and Toblerone. Ronnie, did you manage to count them up? Um, I know it's a lot of pressure on you. Uh, and I don't like putting pressure on people, but... Uh, yeah. Um... Thank you, Father. Good night. Uh, Toblerone, or, Toblerone, out on its own, triangle of chocolate, that's Toblerone. That was the lyrics for the advert, those who remember. Well, that's interesting, I'll have to check that out. So Toblerone it is. Okay, well, looks like Toblerone has done it. Uh, looks like I might have to have the aero tonight. <laughs> uh, this could be my, no, I've got to get back on it, got to get back on it. Anyway, cheerio, see you everybody. Hope you have um, a lovely evening and um, hopefully we won't be, uh, in, you know, interrupted by anyone else soon. But anyway, see you. Goodbye. Bye.
Goodbye. Bye. Pack it in, you. Pack it in. No, stop it.